In today's Mastercam blog, we're talking bars. Not the bar that two guys walked into, but the other guy ducked. Not the one where the Roman walked into and asked for five beers. Uh, but we're talking about the selection bar in Mastercam. talking about the selection bar up here at the top of the graphics screen. So the selection bar here is going to help us tell Mastercam what it is we're trying to select and refine what can be selected and how it's selected to make our selection process that much easier. Uh, so let's go through each of these buttons and see what they do. So the first one on the left is the toggle auto cursor lock. Uh, so basically this is, is nothing until we've actually gone in and picked something for our auto cursor selection. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at these first and then we'll see how this lock actually works. So these settings will come into play when we're in some sort of function uh, as far as maybe creating geometry or inside of a toolpath and picking geometry for that toolpath. So I'm going to hop into uh, a wireframe here and just click on line points. So right now my auto cursor is set to, uh, well it's set to auto cursor. So it's going to try and give me options to pick on uh, depending on where I hover my cursor and it'll give me some, some selection points there. Uh, there are instances when you want to tell Mastercam what it is you're trying to pick. Uh, some of these are not even accessible from your auto cursor selection. So I can't get the, the middle of the face of this, this solid block here. In my auto cursor though, if I open it up and come down to face center, I can now get a snap point on that face. Okay, so this up here is a way to tell Mastercam what it is you're trying to pick, uh, especially if nothing's not turned on. So what do I mean by turned on? So in auto cursor, if we're in auto cursor mode, over to the right here, there's a selection setting. This is what is turned on for selection in the auto cursor um, mode. So when this says auto cursor, these are the things that the auto cursor will try and pick up. Uh, origin, arc center points, line endpoints, intersections, midpoints, points, uh, etc. Temporary midpoints as well. And some of these you can, you can turn on uh, or off depending on your preference for what you want uh, to have available for selection during auto cursor. Again, you will notice that the, the example I gave there, the face center point is not an option for auto cursor mode. Uh, so that one you would have to manually go in and turn on face uh, midpoint or center point uh, to get that option. So I'm just going to close this thing down here for a second. Let's go back to our auto cursor. Again, I'm going to enable face center and come back full circle to this auto lock. So basically I've got face center turned on. When I come over and click on that face center, uh, I've snapped to that point, but notice my, my cursor here has gone back to auto cursor mode. So it's back in that auto cursor mode where I don't have that, that face selection option uh, in this mode. So if I wanted to keep on clicking face center points, for example, I would click on this face center point and then I would lock it. And now I can click on face center points uh, to my heart's content and it will remain locked in this face center point selection mode. Uh, so there you can see the, the lines I've been making. Okay, so that's what the lock does. It basically when you venture outside of auto cursor, it gives you the ability to, to lock the mode that you've selected as your selection method for uh, until you obviously unlock it. Okay. So lots of options in here as far as what you can pick and, and force it into a selection method. Uh, let's go back to our auto cursor mode. We did talk about all these methods in here briefly saying that you can turn these on or off. Uh, keep in mind when you turn them on or off and hit OK, you're going to be asked if you want to save this into your config file. Uh, and basically what that's going to do is if you enable Quadrant and click Yes, uh, anytime you run Mastercam now, you're going to have Quadrant as an option in your auto cursor mode. That may or may not be something that you want. Uh, personally myself, I don't want that on. So I would, I would click No here. I'm still going to be able to click on a Quadrant. There's the Quadrant symbol there. But this, this quadrant being enabled will only be enabled for this, this session. As soon as I start a new file or load uh, an existing file up, this quadrant enabling will be cleared back out. Right, so I'm going to actually turn that off. Beside the uh, auto cursor is the fast point. Fast point we talk about quite a bit in our geometry creation uh, lessons, so I'm not going to go too deep into that. 
It's just basically a way to, to input X, Y, and Z uh, when you're doing geometry creation. So next up along our path is two buttons that are kind of uh, intertwined. We've got standard selection and solid selection. So basically the use behind these two buttons is if you hop into a function that you can give it either solids or some other type of entity, uh, you can switch between the two modes. So as an example, uh, I've got two bodies here on screen. This gray one is a solid and this orange thing is made up of surfaces. So if I was to hop into silhouette boundary, I can select uh, things in either the, the standard selection mode or in uh, solid selection mode. So right now with the standard selection grayed out, that means I am in standard selection. And when I click on something, it's gonna grab it. Uh, so if I just click on this cube right now, I can only select the entire thing. Uh, with these surfaces, I can click on each individual surface. That's pretty straightforward. Um, but if I want to grab just faces of this solid, I can't do that in this current selection mode. So let me clear that out and I'll enable solid selection. I notice over here now that uh, this face selection and this body selection is now active. And as I hover over my solid, uh, I'm given the visual cue there that represents um, the entire solid body. Or if I move a little bit, you'll see the face icon come up and that would give me the ability to only select a face. Uh, so that again, that will expand basically the difference between standard selection, where when I click on something, I select the entire thing, whatever that may be. Or if I head into solid selection, I'm, I'm able now to subdivide that down into faces or bodies. Uh, basically for surfaces though, that's not going to matter if I'm selecting a body or a face or whatever. It's, it's um, standard selection. I can still do face by face by face. So while we're here, we can also have a look at the, the extra selection here, and that's the from back. So the way this is set up right now, I'm, I'm specifically going to be looking at this solid in front. If I wanted to select this face back here, um, given that this thing's kind of in the way, think of a scenario where this is maybe a bit closer and it would be hard to get in here and make that selection on, on the back face. Uh, the option that we do have is this uh, from back. So when I turn on from back, let me switch over to a translucent view. And when I put my cursor key here, notice the back wall is, is highlighting. So when I click on that, I'm in fact grabbing through the solid instead of grabbing that face on, on top. So if I was to turn this from back off and click on that same spot, notice it's now grabbing the surface on top of the part. Uh, so the from back allows you to select those, those surfaces that maybe you couldn't turn the model and easily get at uh, that face. So that's what from back is doing. So one more thing we can cover in the solid selection mode. I'm going to go back into a solid view and hop over into a model prep function, uh, push-pull. So now when I hop into push-pull, I'm basically, I'm already in uh, solid selection mode and I can't switch out of it. So uh, model prep only works on solids, so you're not going to be given the option to select anything but solids. Now with that, uh, I can't select a body because we can't perform a, a push-pull operation on an entire body. But we can perform push-pulls on either edges or faces. So given that, we obviously have the option to select either an edge or a face. So those are both active right now. And if I hover over this face on top, you'll see the face highlight. If I hover near the edge, you'll see the edge highlight. So this is fine. This is great. This works fine most of the time, except for those times when you've got a really small face um, close to a couple edges, and maybe you want to be selecting the edge instead of the face or vice versa. And that might be a point where you might want to turn one of these off. So if you want to grab the edge, maybe turning the face selection off, uh, will help you out. So now when I'm coming here, I'm only getting the option to pick edges. Uh, and obviously the flip side of that is I'm only going to get the option to select a face and not the edge that might be getting in the way of your operation. Okay, so we've covered solid selection, standard selection, edges, faces, uh, bodies, and from back. So let's carry on over into our next section. So looking at selection methods, by default, we are going to be in the automatic mode. So automatic is basically going to try and uh, give you several of these options without having to explicitly pick one. So for example, uh, we can do chain, we can do window, and we can do single all in the automatic mode. Okay, so single is just how it would sound. You can come in and click on a single entity and it will get selected. If we want to do a chain, what we're gonna do is hold down our shift key and then click on an entity and anything that connects to the end of the entity we clicked on 
will be selected as part of that chain. So I can click on another piece and another chain will be selected. So doing that, I need to hold down my shift key. We can also do the window selection. I'm just gonna left click and hold and start dragging my mouse. Uh, at that point, you can let go of the left mouse button and then re-clicking that will select anything in that window. Uh, one thing to make note of about windowing is this selection mode will have an effect on the Windows selection behavior. Uh, there's more on that coming in a different, uh, different video. So that covers automatic and their ability to do chain, single, and window. Uh, let's have a look at why you would want to actually pick chain. So if you can select chains just by holding on your shift key, why would you want to come in here and physically turn on chain? Well, if you had multiple chains that you wanted to select, going into the chain mode allows you to simply just come in and start clicking without having to worry about holding down that shift key. Now, as far as some of the other options in here that we need to actually pick to use, such as Polygon, let me go into Polygon right now. Polygon is very similar to, to Window, uh, except for the fact that you can start to make more of a shape with this Polygon. And if you wanted to maybe leave a few features out, makes it much easier to do. And the same rules for window will apply to polygon in regards to the selection mode. Next up, we've got uh, the area method. So when we go into area, this is a very useful selection method if you want to select a lot of things inside of a shape. So if I want to select all of these circles inside of this rectangle, I can click inside that rectangle and it will grab everything inside that boundary. So it works very good at selecting a lot of things quickly and specifically not a lot of things that are exactly the same. The last one here is vector. And what this allows you to do is basically draw a line through the things you want to pick. So I can left click and you can see I'm getting a line and I can left click and start zigging and zagging through the things I want to pick or don't want to pick. Once I'm done, I hit enter and all those entities will be selected that I've drawn my vector line through. So that covers all of the options inside of our selection method. I'm just going to set this back to automatic. Uh, as mentioned, all of these in, out, in plus, out plus, and intersect, we have an entirely separate video covering all of these and, and how they work. But basically, when you're doing windowing, when you select in, anything has, well, everything inside of the rectangle will be selected. Um, in plus would be anything inside plus anything that's touching the boundary of the rectangle will be selected. Out is the inverse and then intersect is anything that intersects with that shape you've drawn. But again, for more information, go check out that other video. Uh, this video is long enough as is without going through all of these. So next over is this temporary center point. Now, what does this do? I'm gonna turn this off to start, but before that, I'm gonna hop into dynamic. And now I'm gonna turn this off. So right now it is not on. I'm going to window select everything, click end selection and everything looks normal. I can start doing my dynamic motion here, dynamic translates, uh, everything's fine. So what's the difference here? Let's do this dynamic one more time. Turn this temporary center point back on. Now make my selection and selection. Notice that data mark right in the middle there. So that is the exact middle of everything I've selected. And I can now use that as an anchor point to do whatever it is I wanted to do. Dynamic translate, mirror, rotate, whatever it is I need to do. So that may or may not be useful. I probably would leave it turned on unless there's a reason why you don't want to have it on your screen while you're doing your movements, but uh, a very useful function, especially when you're in the uh, transform page here. Continuing over, we've got verify selection. Now, what will this button do? So this one, for example, I've got this one line here. If I have another piece of geometry directly on top of it or below it or basically overlapping with it, um, selecting that one line I just made is extremely difficult. Let me just turn this verify back off. So basically I can select this whole line. Um, it's, it's hard for me to, to even get a highlight on the line underneath of it. So in order to select it, what we can do here is go to Verify Selection. I'm going to click where that line is. It's previewing what I'm going to select. This is not the line I want, so I'm going to click this arrow for next. That is the line that I want, so now I can green check, and now I've got that line selected. Invert Selection. 
So this guy, uh, let's say for example, I wanted to select everything except for this circle here. Uh, so going ahead and clicking on each and every single thing except for that circle can be a little time consuming, especially in a larger file. So what you can do is select this and then come up to invert selection and it will flip what is selected and what's deselected. Last button is this select last. Uh, so what this can do, for an example, is it selects the last thing that you were working with. So let's, we're going to transform. Say we do a translate. And I had grabbed a bunch of geometry and selection, and I did a move to it. OK, and I'm going to go hop back into my translate again. And I'll click this select last. It reselects that piece of geometry. Uh, so if, if you've watched the video on quick mass, you might be saying, um, well, I could just use my quick mask to select the red entity, the, uh, the, the group that was used for the translate. And that is true. Let me just clear colors here for a second. Uh, to give the, the added benefit of the select last, let's say we're in a translate. We go ahead and we select uh, 600 pieces of geometry and we go to translate it. But for whatever reason, we exit out before we actually do the translate. So now I don't have anything that's been grouped. I don't have a result. I don't have that quick mask option to select all that geometry that I just selected. With this select last, I'm getting that selection even though I didn't complete an operation with it. So I selected this circle last time, but I didn't actually do a completion for whatever reason that the operation failed. Here you can use that select last uh, to reselect all that geometry you painstakingly selected before the transform function failed. Uh, so that covers, I think, pretty much every single button up here in the selection menu. Again, there's still nuanced ways about how everything else can work. Uh, but in a nutshell, I think we've summarized everything great. And as always, if there's extra things you need to know about it, you can always check out the help files uh, by doing a search for the selection bar.